Halo TV show. Where to start with this thing? I'm going to do a full spoiler-free review, and then I'll give a spoiler warning, and then we'll move straight in to ripping this thing to shreds. I mean, dissecting it. Disassembling it. Let's go with that. Disassembling it. I've been a fan of the Halo franchise for a long time. The first game was a cultural phenomenon. I didn't even have an Xbox at the time, but I still managed to play the heck out of that first game. Friends would get together and play it. I remember going to a friend's church one time, and in their youth center there, they had like pool tables and ping pong tables and stuff like that set up to where you could play before class starts. And they also had a couple of Xboxes land together on TVs on one side of the room for all of us to sit there and kill each other through LAN in Halo. Then Halo 2 came out and totally revolutionized the way we play games online. I didn't play much of that one at the time, but I can remember going to band camp and we were there for the whole week. And so there were a couple of the other band nerds there that had Xboxes and they were literally running phone cables. I can't remember if it was through a phone cable. I guess it would have been broadband, right? For Xbox Live on the original Xbox for Halo 2. They're running cables all the way down the length of the hallway so that they can connect to Xbox Live and play with other people. Then the third one came out, and I finally had my own Xbox, and Halo was bigger than ever. You could make matches with customized rule sets and customized maps and host your own little private lobbies. And so, like, every time a holiday came around, what I would do was I would, I would go through the matchmaking system for a while first so that I could interact with a bunch of random players. And then I'd go create my own custom lobby uh, and make like a holiday event. I'll just invite all these random people that I just played with for the last hour or whatever. Get like, I think 16 was the max in a lobby. I'd get 16 people together. I'd stuff that lobby as full as possible and we'd play whatever random custom games. Then when Halo Reach came out, I was a senior in high school, my sister and I, shout out Kayla, we were the first people in line to get Halo Reach at midnight when it first released. Now we were in line, we were there for like I think two hours at our local Walmart. This is like in the middle of nowhere where we lived. So it's not like there was a big line or anything, but we were the first people there out of the couple people who did show up. I got the, um, what's it called? The official countdown clock that they had in the display case before the game, the game came out and a free poster. So that was cool. And then when Halo Infinite came out, I took like the whole rest of the week off from work just so I could sit there, play all the way through it, totally absorb it, and then make a review for it. Hell, when I started this channel, it was my full intention to be a Halo channel, actually. <laughs> oh, that is glorious with the thruster pack. Yep, right there. Saved your ass. Right, There's like three of them, though. What? There's two. Uh -huh. Apocalypse. All right. Halo is great. I love it. But Hollywood has a reputation of taking things that are really beloved, and just totally running them into the ground whenever they get their grubby little mitts on it for the sake of profit. So I've been really skeptical of this show ever since it was first announced. Now that the reviews are coming out about it, surprise, surprise, everybody hates it. Even all the people I trust when it comes to movies and TV shows, when I, the people whose opinions I listen to, even all of them say it's terrible. Personally, I believe in giving things a fair shot, checking it out for myself, formulating my own opinion on it, trying to, I don't know, meditate and put everybody else's opinions out of my mind if I've heard other people's opinions. And so that's what I did with this. So what did I think about it? Well, I'm going to give it another episode or two before I make my final judgments on it. As it stands with the first episode, I'd say it's fine. It takes the aesthetics from the games, but that's about it. My understanding is that this is like an alternate timeline from the game, and that this takes inspiration from the books and not the games. So they lost a ton of credibility right off the bat before they even got the show started, because Halo is the games. There's a there's a bunch of books and stuff, but all that all that information, all that lore is like supplemental information to the games. So if you, for these people to have come out and said said directly to us that we ignored the games, none of us played the games, we don't want anything to do with the games, it's all about the books, they lost, the, they lost a lot of credibility right there. 
They're basically saying directly to the fans of the games, like, hey, we don't care about y'all. We're looking at this over here. So admitting you don't care about the games to the hardcore Halo fans immediately tells us that you're going to take the characters from the franchise that we recognize, maybe the aesthetics from the games, just do whatever you want to with it, even if it doesn't make any sense. So if you're a hardcore fan of the games like I am, I don't think you'll like it. If you're more of a passerby, like a casual fan who's played it once or twice and thinks it looks pretty cool, this show is for you, actually. And of the people who I've heard from that don't fit in either one of those categories, none of them liked it. So I'd give it about a 30 to 40% chance that you might like this show. Allow me to give you a numerical score for this show, but not without me defining what the hell the score, what the number means to me. Because I'm not just going to throw out a number and say, this is all blah 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 out of 10. No, 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 let's break it down first. Let me be very clear. A 5 out of 10 is average. There's my dog. A 6 out of 10 is slightly above average, and a 4 out of 10 is slightly below average. I'm going to take all the individual aspects of the show, give them each their own score, and then I'm going to average all those scores together to make the overall score. First category is visual effects. Now that's everything from explosions to sets to CGI characters. Hey, can you, can you not do that right now? Thank you. <laughs> Most of the effects were fine. The Spartans looked great, and then the Elites looked like crap, so that kind of balances out to me. Next category is sound design. So that's everything from to to footsteps of Master Chief. After all, canonically, he does weigh about 2,000 pounds, canonically, so I actually do want to point that out. I really liked the, the nice impactful thuds we got with his, you know, stomping around. Most of the sounds were serviceable enough in this show, but I'm kind of baffled that they didn't just use the sound effects from the games because those are really good. And like, if you're gonna if you're gonna own Halo and make a thing about Halo, why not use the cool sounds that we had in the games, right? Sound design, five out of ten. Nothing special here at all. Next category is the cast. Now, the guy who plays Master Chief, generally, I think was a good pick, and I know that's not a popular opinion. People didn't think he looked right when well, so he took his fucking helmet off. They didn't think he looked like Master Chief should look uh, or whatever. I, I thought he was a pretty great pick. He had the build, or maybe that was all the suit. I don't know, but assuming part of that was him. He filled it out. I thought his face looked pretty good for whatever we're going to wind up getting for Master Chief. I know that's not a popular opinion, but hey, I liked it. Miranda Keys, to me, just seem horribly miscast and not only because they race swapped her i didn't really care about that actually uh to me she just seemed too young like she just looked like a little kid like a teenager or a little kid you know and um miranda keys when we first met her in halo 2 was just like i don't know i guess like way older she seemed more experienced to me more like um uh, maybe late 30s or so not like a teenager <laughs> She's confident, you know? Captain Keys was fine enough. We didn't get a whole lot of them. The girl playing Quan was at least a decent actress, in my opinion. That all kind of balances out for me. Five out of ten. Music. Man, does this show have a lot to live up to in terms of music. The music from the Halo franchise is legendary. No pun intended. The music in the show, however, was... Good, actually. Did it fit the Halo aesthetic really well? No, not really. It served its purpose pretty well in each individual moment that we heard it, but it's kind of like Star Wars. If you take out the star, the iconic Star Wars music and just throw in other generic action music to fit each scene or whatever, it's just, there's just something missing there. Believe it or not, I'm going to give the music a 6 out of 10. doesn't quite live up to the franchise expectations, but for TV show music it was actually pretty good. And the last category is weapons. Yes, they are getting their own score because I am a firearms guy. <laughs> This is everything from weapon choice to firearms handling. Let's get the Covenant weapons out of the way first. The first time they show up, they straight up blow people's limbs off. But then as soon as they get into like the big battle, they just kind of do regular bullet damage. And then Spartan 125 or one of the Spartans gets a plasma gun in her hand and then blows somebody's head off with it. So like wildly inconsistent with Covenant weapons. And then our intro faction over here, the Insurrectionists, are literally just using AKs and AUGs, like canonically 600 year old weapons in Halo. Halo takes place in like 
2550 and beyond. So that just doesn't really work for me here. It just doesn't it doesn't look right aesthetically. And it just I don't know, man. But then the UNSC, including the Spartans, they have their battle rifles, their DMR, the classic sniper, they've got the magnums. They've got all the classic Halo weapons there, so no problem there. And as far as weapon handling goes, the trigger discipline all around was actually pretty good. Most shows and movies and whatever, they got their finger on the trigger like all the time. It's annoying. They'd be like, hey friend, what's up? You know, like, they're fucking pointing a gun at them with their finger on the trigger and all that shit. This show, they at least kept it high most of the time and off the trigger, so I gotta give them a little props for at least basic firearm safety, just because no one else seems to include that. Like, it's getting, it's catching on more and more now, I've noticed, in, um, shows and movies and whatnot, but previously it's been completely unheard of. Oh, we did get one instance of a guy with an AK <laughs> shooting and running at the guy he was shooting at. The, the elite, he was shooting at an elite. Shooting and running at his target. Dude, you got a freaking ranged weapon. Hang back and shoot at him. Like, man, it's like one of the worst tropes to me. It, typically, you know, you'll get you'll get your, oh no, uh, I got a pistol and like the main character's over there fighting, so instead of shooting, I'm going to walk over towards him. So at least this dude was like shooting and running at the elite, but like, what was the purpose of that, man? <laughs> Pretty tired of seeing crap like that, honestly. Either way, weapons handling 6 out of 10. So the overall score here winds up being a 5.4 out of 10. See it or skip it, doesn't matter. That's it for the spoiler free section, let's rip this thing to shreds. Magical. The galaxy's highest concentration of heavy hydrogen. Power your ships, and power your drugs. So we have drugs in Halo now. Can't say that's something we were missing. The show also isn't afraid to show people getting dismembered, so that's pretty cool, I guess. These people are holding AKs. Almost all of them. It's just AKs. A 600-year-old gun by this universe's lore. This guy has an eye closed, which actively makes it harder to aim, by the way. But what makes it even harder is the fact that this gun has no sights on it! This lady back here is holding an AUG. This guy also doesn't have any sights. The props department really thought this was the way to go, huh? They thought we wouldn't notice. We noticed! I like the way they sprinkled in these little first-person sections, but they may have done more harm than good. This one right here shows Chief has six rounds left, and then he proceeds to fire off another 11. <laughs> Dual-wielding? This isn't 2007, that's illegal! Next up, we can see the ammo belt for this turret is not moving! I'm not sure if it got overlooked, or if they're trying to show that this is actually like a magazine tube instead of a belt? Question mark? You can still see it attached as he drops the turret. Ah uh, yes, let's use this ranged weapon as we move all the way to our target instead of hanging back and attacking from a distance. Oh, hey, don't just leave! <laughs> Wait, so did they just leave then? Like, just completely fuck off into the distance? They did this show with 343, right? The people who just put out this trailer a few months ago? What is a Spartan? A Spartan is a symbol. Hope where there is none. In times of darkness, we are hope. And together, together we are unstoppable. Candidates are 
you ready? Yes, ma'am. I can't hear you. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Again. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Good. Who's first? Yep, they just left. I'm going to give Spartan 125 credit here for her trigger discipline, but what the fuck is that left hand grip? If her thumb catches that slide when she fires, it could cause a malfunction, right? Right? Right. So, I hate to do this, but I'm going to have to cut the video short here. I'm only like a third of the way through all the stuff that I found in the episode that I actually wanted to point out and rip to shreds there. So I'm going to have to do a part two. Uh, I'm not going to have another chance to work on any, any videos or anything for probably the next week or more. And I really wanted to get this out there because I had a lot of fun with it, but I've been working on this for like nine hours and i got to get back to actual work because I have a job. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, do me a favor, hit the like button. Just let me know if you want to see more or not. Uh, anyways, appreciate it.